Right guys, what we're going to talk about now, okay, is the rescue ladder itself and the deployment of the rescue ladder. Okay, now, bear in mind, whenever there's an open edge, you guys are working at the edge, this rescue ladder actually goes with them. Okay. So now, if you look down to the rescue ladder, it all comes with one bag, okay? And outside of the bag will be the carabiner with the ladder attachment. Now, whatever we're actually working with, i.e. it being an inertia reel or a restraint line, well, first of all, we'll talk about inertia reels. So, the first thing we do, once we've found the guy's gone over the edge, is grab the bag, we take it to the anchor point. So then all we simply do is attach the carabiner to the anchor point. see here is a worker has fallen on an inertia reel. His colleague has assessed the situation and realises that he is still conscious. Because remember guys, 99% of falls are only limited falls and you will still be conscious. So the, his colleagues on the slab has deployed the ladder. Once the ladder has been deployed, the, the worker that has fallen can reach for the ladder, step up onto the ladder and take himself out of suspension trauma basically straight away. Now, if the worker was injured that much that he couldn't actually climb the ladder and self-rescue, he could now stand there on the ladder out of suspension trauma basically all day and wait for the emergency services to come along and rescue him. Now, as you can see, that the worker has had a minute, got his breath back, and is able to climb the ladder, self-rescue, and get himself up by climbing the ladder onto the slab. Guys, it is paramount that when people are working at height, there is provision for rescue. Nine times out of ten, the fall occurs is limited, and as such, the victim is conscious and able to recover himself. But if we don't get to him straight away, then we've got bigger problems to do with suspension trauma and orthopaedic arrest. 